If you suspected one of your neighbors might be an active serial killer, what would you do? Officer Wayne Mackey seems like a fairly normal guy. Sure, he's a bit quick to invite people down to his basement and routinely hands out popsicles to random children on the street, but this is the 80s. People weren't completely terrified of social interaction yet. All in all, the man's a pillar of the community, so it's gonna take some serious evidence to convince the town he's the murderer, especially given our junior detective has a bit of a reputation for crawling down the rabbit hole. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Cape May Slayer in Summer of 84. Davey is a paper boy, and it's time to collect. Usually, this is done via dead drop in the customer's mailbox, but wouldn't you know it? His neighbor, Mr. Mackey's got to make things difficult. Well, actually, I was going to ask if you could help me lift something inside. If you have a second, get the money then, two birds, one stone. Oh, yeah, let me just go ahead and do extra work for the money you already owe me. Although, I guess it beats fishing it out of his bathrobe. I'm sure all the Zoomers out there are losing their minds over what a red flag this seems like. But Mackey's request isn't that big a deal. Sure, it'd be one thing if he hadn't ever been seen outside his house or something, but the guy's pretty well connected with everyone in the area. Having to ask your neighbors for help around the house is one of the downsides of living alone. And it's not like he's asking us to crawl into his camper van. All that being said... Dude, I got money to make and you'd better have that sh mailbox next time I come around or your next paper's going on the roof. This video is brought to you by Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is a free-to-play open world MMO game in which you command a star base on the front lines of the Star Trek universe. Construct and customize fleets full of badass ships like the USS Enterprise A, Hegta, Sarcophagus, and Tribune from playable factions like Augment, Federation, Klingon, Romulan, and Independent. Recruit to legendary officers to crew them like Cadet James T. Kirk, Spock, and, of course, Marlena Moreau. Pursue the high of expanding your territory, exterminating your rivals, exploiting their resources, and exploring strange new worlds to exploit their resources. Star Trek Fleet Command is available for free on iOS, Android, and Windows. Download now by using my link below or by scanning the QR code. The Borg are back in new missions inspired by their iconic appearances in Star Trek The Next Generation. Join Hugh the Borg and help him stop a scientist's quest for revenge against the Collective. Save an eager Packlet from himself as he tries to get the Borg to assimilate him on purpose. Prevent the Borg from assimilating the technology behind your AI assistant Maya. There's also a new feature called Fleet Commanders. Once you build your command center, a new starbase location, you can assign well-known Star Trek heroes and villains to oversee strategy from their starbases for increased power and effectiveness. Fleet Commanders launches with with three choices, Admiral James T. Kirk, Captain Spock, or Locutus of Borg. Download now by using my link below or by scanning the QR code and conquer the Star Trek universe. Lucky for him, Davy's some kind of sucker for human compassion. I don't get it either. I mean, I guess having a cop owe you a favor could be beneficial in the long run, but it's not like helping him schlep a bookshelf down into the basement's gonna land you a get out of jail free card. Well, that was fun. Let's leave. I don't want to hear about his amateur dark room, and the longer we wait around making small talk, the more likely he is to try and befriend us. How old are you anyway? 15. 15. It's the perfect age. I wish I could just freeze it for you. You know, with my chest freezer. Yeah, that's a pretty weird thing to say, dude, but I'm willing to let it slide. After all, Davey here isn't exactly the picture of normality either. What kind of 15-year-old wallpapers his bedroom with tabloid clippings from the Daily Exaggerator? Oh, cannibals in the sewer? The commies caught Nessie. Krauts colonized the moon. Okay, well, I give him that last one. If you've seen that 2012 documentary, Iron Sky, you know what I'm talking about. Point being, he's kind of a little wacko. Even his friends agree. Remember when he connected a light right to his keyboard to try and communicate with the extraterrestrials? <laughs> Jesus, kid's gonna grow up to have his own show on the History Channel. At any rate, things start heating up in the sleepy town of Ipswich when the word gets out about a serial killer in the area, responsible for the disappearance of 13 teenagers and two adults. Naturally, upon hearing the news story, Davy lights up like a bird with a french fry. The way he sees it, this is the coolest thing to ever happen in their boring sub and the fact that he and his friends fit the description of the killer's preferred victims only adds to the excitement. However, it seems Davy's dream of waking up in Ethan Hawke's basement will likely never be realized. As his friend Faraday points out, the Slayer's hunting grounds comprises 10 separate towns, and thus far there's no indication he's ever come through Ipswich, or so they think.
Mackie is the Cape May Slayer. Because of milk? Turns out, Davy saw the kid on the carton sitting in Mackie's living room a few weeks back while he was playing hide and seek. Sorry, manhunt. Gotta say, that's pretty damning. Only problem is, how do you prove it? You could call the anonymous tip lines all you want, and the most that could possibly come of it is some other cop asking Mackie if it's true, and him saying no. They'd probably just write it off as someone angry about being pulled over. Of course, it doesn't help at all that Davy has, like, zero credibility around here which is why he didn't even bother sharing this realization with his own parents. As for his friends, they're not entirely convinced, but the idea of creeping on an unsuspecting person and recording their every move is extremely appealing to them for some reason. This is back crazy. I'm in. <laughs> Operation Mac Attack starts now. Well, at least it rhymes. Man, summers around this place must be dead as hell. They're all so eager to spend hours a day stalking this guy. That said, it is a great first step towards finding evidence. Their account of his daily activities won't exactly land him behind bars, but it will give them an idea of when he won't be around so they can search his place for clues. Raging clues. My only problem with their approach is that while they take care to hide their overtly bizarre behavior from Mackie himself, anyone else in the neighborhood would be able to see what they're doing as clear as day. And with everyone around here being so close, they run the risk of someone telling him he's being watched. Given Davey lives the closest to him, we should put most of the responsibility on him, as he should be able to observe from his house without raising suspicion. Kid already spends most of his nights sightseeing anyway, so even if he's spotted, people are probably used to it. We should also take advantage of Eats Treehouse as it provides a clear view of Mackie's front yard, making it another great spot to keep watch at all hours of the day. Aside from that, I would have us working in groups of two or three. Not only could one of us potentially catch something the others missed, but as long as we're not all leering at him, people might think we're just standing around talking. Oh, yeah, there's also a god serial killer out there snatching teenage boys. The only thing worse than being wrong is being wrong while being bound and gagged in the back of someone's van. Now that we know his schedule, what do we do next? We catch this f***er, become heroes. It sounds like you're missing a few steps. Having watched this guy for a while now, there's not much that really stands out. That is, except for his evening jogs. He definitely doesn't strike me as someone who runs for an hour five nights a week, unless it's to the nearest donut shop and back. Seems to me like he might be doing something else at this time. Something he's trying to disguise. Right now, our number one priority should be following him on a few of these runs. For safety reasons, we should all go together. Plus, on the off chance he spots us, we can more easily play it off as a bunch of teenagers out stirring up trouble. If this is really a cover for something, we'll find out pretty quick. If not, well, good for him. Routine exercise is the cornerstone of a healthy lifestyle. Instead of tailing him, the boys use the opportunity to go through his trash. It's not the worst idea in the world, since he probably wouldn't expect it, but their execution is absolutely brain dead. After all, how can you pin it all on raccoons when the four of you are standing right there in the middle of it? Once again, there are other people who live in this neighborhood, and 11 p.m. isn't nearly late enough to guarantee no one's watching. A far better way to go about this would be filling another trash bag with a bunch of random crap and quickly swapping it out with Mackie's, Indiana Jones style. This way, we can examine his refuse more thoroughly in a private location, without the fear of getting caught, especially if we're going to be doing this on multiple occasions. Unfortunately, this particular dumpster dive doesn't turn up anything useful, but as long as we're committed to stocking this dude, we should keep at it. Never know what might turn up, especially since the Cape May Slayer picked tonight to strike again. I guess that's what you get for stopping like 50 yards away. What, you think you can just round a single corner and be home free? The only thing worse than seeing someone chasing after you is not seeing them. So we shouldn't have stopped running until we either made it back to our house or found other people. Speaking of which, you're in a densely populated neighborhood. Why are you not screaming bloody murder while this dude chases you? If you're lucky, the sight of a few porch lights flipping on might be all it takes to change his mind. Oh well, scratch another one for the maniac. Seems like he's starting to pick pick up the pace since that news story aired. Supposedly, he took those 15 victims over the course of 10 years. Now he's gone and added two more in just the span of a couple months. Davy and the gang better hurry up and bust this one open before it starts becoming weekly. Although, that's gonna be pretty hard for them to accomplish if they keep pulling bonehead moves like this. 
Woody, what are you doing? You're gonna lose him. Go! Guys, I'm freaking out, okay? And you should be, because tailing an on-duty police officer while driving underaged in the car you stole from your mom is some two-figure IQ sh and one of those figures is a minus sign. On the one hand, I can understand how he might be using his authority while in uniform to snatch unsuspecting teens off the street, but he's not doing it every day. Remember, 15 kills across 10 years. Even if the actual rate is really triple that, it still only gives you a 1 in 81 chance of catching him in the act today. And that's assuming you follow him around for the entirety of his shift, which we already know you won't be able to do since it'll only be a couple hours tops before Woody's mom Mom sleeps it off. And yes, I suppose it's possible he might stop off at a suspicious location we could come back to and investigate later, but I still think it's far more likely we'll get pulled over before that happens. In which case, Woody will probably be grounded into a fine powder, and the rest of us might be as well if his mom decides to spread the word. Oh sh and there it is. Fortunately for the brain trust here, it's not Mackie that just lit them up. What's more, the cop happens to be church friends with Woody's mom, which is just enough to get them off with a warning. That went about as well as it possibly could have. As for what we learned on our little joyride, it really isn't that much. All we saw was him stopping by the hardware store to load up his patrol car with planting soil and gardening tools. Now, according to each degenerate older brother who works there, Mackie buys about 100 pounds of soil every Every week, which sounds extremely suspicious until you think about it for like five seconds. Obviously, the boys are assuming he's using this to bury bodies, but by virtue of digging a hole to put someone in, you've already acquired enough dirt to cover them up and it costs you zero dollars. In fact, you'll even have a little extra since their body will display some of it. So, unless he's burying his victims above ground, this must be for something else. Ultimately, a far better use of this time would have been spent snooping around his property while he, and most of the other adults in the neighborhood, would be at work. It's part of the reason so many robberies take place in broad daylight. Aside from that, if we're just desperate to get to the bottom of this soil mystery, we could have just had Eats ask his brother when Mackie usually comes by and plan to be there at the same time so we can casually ask him about his unusual purchase. At that point, if he starts sweating bullets, then maybe it's time to put some mental energy into it. Otherwise, I'd forget about it entirely. Speaking of mental energy, they must have burned it all up planning that car chase play because their next move isn't that much better. Well, you guys are spying. We're gonna plant one of these outside Mackie's bedroom window. Can you see the other one to listen? Ah, yes. And the walkie even says G.I. Joe on the front of it. So you know it's quality. The plan is to do this while they're out playing hide and seek, so they have a plausible excuse in case they get spotted. Except, what part of that dumb game requires you to stand on each other's shoulder and screw around with your neighbor's lattice work? That doesn't really look like the behavior of someone who's trying to hide. How about this? Why don't you place the walkie behind the bush instead? You know, the one that's even closer to his bedroom window than the spot you're actually going for. Not only would it make this whole operation far more expedient and discreet, it'll make for a much easier retrieval once you realize how profoundly f stupid it is. Also, the very idea of using the game as a cover is totally unnecessary when you know he'll be out jogging for an hour at a time five nights a week. What, could you just not bear the thought of waiting a little longer to put your foolproof plan into action? You're only increasing your chances of getting spotted when some little punk finds you, which is exactly what happens. So, how did all this galaxy brain detective work play out? Oh, great. Now he knows you're spying on him. Probably had something to do with Davey coming back in broad daylight while Mackie was home to examine the radio. Gee, I wonder why that thing wasn't working. Maybe it's because you forgot to pull the antenna out. Or maybe it's because you're using cheap plastic garbage meant for playing army in your backyard. About the only valuable information that did come from this exercise in futility was what Faraday saw while they were planting the walkie. He's wearing rubber gloves and he's got a fucking cleaning shit. It looks like bleach, uh, scrub. Rush. Holy shit, he's got blood on him! Perfect. If only we could have made this discovery without shooting ourselves in the foot five seconds later. It still doesn't give us anything we can use as proof, but it does suggest he's recently taken another victim. Knowing this, we should ask Davy's dad if his media connections have reported any new abductions. If we're lucky, he might know where the victim was last seen alive, which we could then go investigate for any clues. Sure, the police would have likely worked the area over thoroughly, but there's always a chance they might have missed some 
something. Of course, now Mackie knows that Davy's spying on him for some reason. Although, if he's actually the killer, he's probably aware of it. And aside from plotting an abduction or home invasion, how many reasons could there be for stalking someone like this? Were it up to me, I'd say we quit while we still have our heads and ask our parents to send us away to a far off military school. Aside from that, we could try going to Mackie as a group and telling him we only put the walkie there to help us cheat at our little preschool game. After all, the kids around here pretty much run wild when it's their turn to hide, and Mackie's yard is apparently known for having good hiding spots. If we're lucky, he might have spent the last few days binge drinking and accept our story at face value. Either way, I think it's safe to say the fun's over, but of course Davy's just getting warmed up. In fact, it's only now, with Mackie almost certainly being extra cautious, that they decide to actually follow him out on one of his evening jogs. Well, two of them anyway. Davy and Eats are going to take the opportunity to do some digging in his backyard. I mean, literally. They're going to dig up his garden because they think he's burying bodies back there. And while that would be great for the soil, I gotta say, I have my doubts. Yes, there are absolutely serial killers that buried bodies in their own backyard. But as the boys already established, Mackie is a cop and as such, would likely do everything he could to disconnect himself from any physical evidence, including dumping his victims somewhere that can't be directly traced back to him. Besides, given he already knows we're watching him, who do you think he's gonna suspect was responsible for digging up his garden? Raccoons, just like with the garbage in the street. Dude, how big are the goddamn raccoons out there? No way he's gonna believe a 15 pound varmint dug up a grave-sized hole over the course of a couple hours. Unless they're willing to break into his house and search for the source of that blood they saw the other night, a better option would be to take a step back and focus on observing from a distance. We should also pool some money together on a decent Polaroid camera we could use to capture anything particularly juicy. Fact is, if Mackie's really bringing his victims onto his property, he'll have to transition them inside from a vehicle at some point. So, we should make an effort to keep watch whenever he leaves, in case he comes back with extra cargo. Luckily, Eats is able to convince Davy to take a different approach before someone hits a power line. Instead, he suggests they check out the shed, and as luck would have it, this little edgelord apparently grows up to be the lock-picking lawyer. How you doing? Honestly, you just uh, jiggle it a bunch, work it around, and it'll pop open most of the time. Genius. Now, if only he could do the same with the one on his stupid necklace. Ultimately, this little B&E pays dividends, as they manage to find a bloody MTV shirt, which Davey immediately recognizes as the one he saw on the missing boy a few weeks back. In that case, we should probably keep digging. I mean, if he was careless enough to leave this thing sitting right out in the open, then who knows what other pieces of memorabilia he has lying around in here. This is also an indication we should try gaining access to his house, albeit on a later date, as Mackie could be home at any minute, or even any second. Hey, what are you guys doing in there? <laughs> you got a death wish? No, for real. What part of this seems like a game to you guys? Jesus Christ, we're currently trespassing in the backyard of a police officer slash potential serial killer having committed vandalism and forced entry. Not to mention what Woody and Faraday saw while doing their part. Turns out, Mackie's jogging route takes him straight to a nearby storage unit. Peeking inside, they spotted a second vehicle he eventually drove off in, along with an empty bag of sodium hydroxide. Yeah, the Bundy mobile is suspicious enough, but the lie pretty much seals the deal, aside from the number of industrial uses, none of which Mackie's likely to be doing in his free time. It's also used to facilitate the decomposition of dead animals, or people. In fact, it's the same stuff a cartel stew master claimed he used to dissolve more than 300 bodies. Having found all this, I'd say it's obvious Mackie's our guy, but we still don't have anything we can hand over to the cops that proves it definitively. What we do have, however, is a clear indication our suspicions are correct meaning now is when we need to go all in to find something undeniably incriminating. Oh, but what about the shirt? Can't we just drop that off at the police station and call it good? Well, there is most certainly blood on it, and the kid's family might be able to confirm that it's identical to the one he was wearing when he went missing. But it's also an incredibly common shirt, and there's no way we can prove we found it at Mackey's. That said, DNA fingerprinting could be used to trace it back to the victim, and even the perpetrator, depending on the circumstances. Which means all we have to 
do is wait six or seven years for that technology to become commonplace in the law enforcement. And boom, case closed. What we definitely shouldn't do is completely jump the gun and tell Davy's parents thinking we have a slam dunk. Because we absolutely do not. 90% of our case right now is based solely on the observations that we have no way to back up. Meaning, it's pretty much his word against ours. Hmm, let's see. A widely respected and beloved police officer with a stellar track record of upstanding behavior. Or a bunch of 15-year-olds who all got a raging clue one night and started Mystery Inc. And the survey says... Randall, guys, what's going on? The boys have something they need to tell you. Take a wild guess as to what it is. Imagine wasting weeks of your summer vacation hunting a serial killer, only to then have to look him in the eye and apologize like you just hit a baseball through his window. Davey confesses to literally everything they've been up to this whole time. From the stakeouts to the trash raid to breaking into his shed, and the dude just laughs it off like it's nothing. Then again, maybe he's just thinking about what he's gonna do to them here in the next couple days. Either way, the damage is done, and Davey's sentenced to an indefinite grounding, which his parents strictly enforce by constantly leaving him alone at the house. Doesn't sound all that bad, actually. That is, until one such occasion, where he gets a surprise visit from his favorite person. Davey, how's it going? Chill out, dude. He's not gonna shoot you. That'd be way too quick. Nah, Mackie just came by to clear the air, as well as explain why there was a milk carton kid chilling in his living room at one point. Apparently, that wasn't the missing teenager after all. It was actually his nephew, Jamie, visiting from Seattle, who just so happens to look exactly like him. As for the shirt, well, he cut himself while they were working on something together. So Mackie hid it behind lock and key out in his shed. You see, this was all just one big misunderstanding standing. And if you really believe that, I know how you can achieve a five-minute work week by selling homeware straight from a wholesaler. Naturally, Mackie realizes Davey's still skeptical, so he agrees to call his nephew right there on the spot to let him explain it himself. Oh, except it sounds like no one's home. Darn. Don't you hate it when the people you make up don't answer the phone? Well, we tried. Fortunately, Davey's smart enough to not press the issue further and end their exchange as quickly as possible. He then calls the operator to ask ask about the last number dialed out from this line. Man, where was this kind of intelligence when he was about to tell his parents? At any rate, in a shocking revelation that shouldn't surprise anyone at this point, there is no Jamie. And we know this because the number Mackie dialed was his own. Actually, we know this because we've already seen a ton of that completely undermines his narrative. Either way, this encounter has completely restored to Davy's interest in taking him down, and it might have worked on his friends too if the Cape May Slayer hadn't been caught that same night. I'd like to bring up the arresting officer. Way back. Uh-huh. Yeah, the dude definitely looks like he would have done it. But what are the odds the same police officer we just accused would be the one to make the collar? I mean, it's literally the last thing he said when he left the house earlier. Not buying it. Of course, try explaining this to the rest of the crew. The way they see it, this is concrete proof that they were wrong all along. But by what can only be described as a miracle of friendship, Davey's able to convince them to assist with one last raid. This time, the plan is to take Davey's dad's news camera into Mackie's house and film everything they find. Specifically, whatever's behind that padlocked door he first noticed back while moving that shelf down to the basement. As for how they'll get away with this, it turns out they're in luck. The apprehension of the killer means the annual Cape May Festival is back on, and basically everyone in the entire world will be going. Everyone except for any teenagers that might have been grounded for spying on their neighbors. Naturally, Officer Mackie will be the guest of honor, making it super easy for Faraday to keep tabs on him. Meanwhile, Eats and Woody will keep an eye on the neighborhood, while Davey goes in solo to seal the deal. Honestly, I think this is a great plan. We'll know where Mackie is at all times, and the potential for witnesses is cut down immensely by the festival. Furthermore, by filming the whole thing, we don't have to worry about our crippling lack of any credibility weakening our testimony. This is exactly the kind of thing I would have proposed we carry out during one of Mackie's fun runs. And if we were ever going to find something that proves his guilt, it's going to be in here. There's just one problem. I can let my best friend go in a serial killer's house alone.
Bro, your role is to be the goddamn lookout. This is not an act of solidarity. You're actively hurting the cause by doing this. Case in point, this chick was able to sneak up on us and scare us half to death because no one was keeping watch. Oh yeah, this is Nikki. She's also in the movie. Although this is the first time she's been involved in the actual plot instead of simply serving as the focal point of Davy's 15-year-old hormonal blitzkrieg. Whatever, the more the merrier, right? Let's just get this over with. Quickly. Fortunately, eats his little magic trick effectively negates every lock known to exist, and the one on Mackie's secret door is no exception. Well, I guess this is it. Where's the 20-foot hole in the garden hose? Instead, all we get is this bizarro world replica of some kid's bedroom from the 1950s, only without the kid. Although, hearing that rustling noise in the other room, I think I might have found him. Gotta say, for someone potentially hiding a dark and terrible secret, he really skimped out on the security. I mean, the three of us got in through a window that wasn't even locked, and even if Davey left his locksmith reader at home, any one of us could have kicked in the door without any problem. Almost makes you think we might have been wrong about this entire thing. Like, we've been reading into details that seem suspicious on the surface, but could actually have logical explanations once you dig deep enough. That is, until you see the cauldron of Finny stew brewing in the bathtub. And that's not all. <laughs> I'd say this beats the hell out of a bloody t-shirt. Instead of helping his friends carry the injured victim to safety as quickly as possible, Davy abandons all sense of urgency to stare at some pictures on the wall. Turns out this isn't Mackie's family tree, but rather a collection of his targets, both past and future. Looks like persistence pays off in the end. Naturally, upon seeing the footage, the police captain is outraged at the thought of having made a fool of himself on national television and sends out every single available unit to bring Mackie in. As for Davy's parents, yeah, good luck telling him pretty much anything ever again. I can't wait to see what he'll be driving on his 16th birthday. Well, provided he lives that long. You see, despite an APB for Mackie's arrest going out immediately, he still hasn't been found. Oh, but don't let that stop you from drifting off to sleep immediately. Dude, there is a brutal psychopath out there who knows 100% you are responsible for ruining his kill streak. Not only that, but he supposedly wasted a kid's entire family during a previous slaying. So this little safety and numbers slumber party thing you got going on with Woody here isn't gonna do you any favors. In fact, you're just serving him up a bonus kill on a silver platter. What we need to do is get out of town ASAP and stay out of town until this guy's sitting in the electric chair. At the very least, we should have asked the police captain to keep a rotation of officers posted outside for the foreseeable future. Then again, that wouldn't accomplish much if he were already inside our house. Remember how excited you were to become a hero? Here's hoping that park bench they name after you is worth whatever horrors you're about to wake up to. Wait, hang on a second. How did he even get inside in the first place? Everyone keeps their doors unlocked around here. Oh, right. Stupidity's contagious. I'm sure all those precious seconds you people saved by not using your house keys were totally worth it. Well, the good news is, he put us in an easily escapable situation by leaving us tied up together like this. The bad news is, he did it on purpose. And given the way he's hurting us out of one side of the police cruiser and into the forest, I'd say he's planning on hunting us down and killing us like a pair of feral hogs. Man, who'd have thought all those years of playing hide and seek could actually come in handy. Too bad they both apparently suck at it. Oh yeah, let's stop running while we can still see the flashing lights behind us. He's giving you a head start, so you'd better be damn sure you're making the most of it. Oh, can't catch us if we keep moving. Well, only if you're moving faster than him, and considering we're both in our socks right now, that's not gonna be easy. Besides, we know for a fact the dude has access to firearms, so really, he doesn't even have to catch us at all. Frankly, I don't see a way out of this for both of us that doesn't involve involve extreme violence. In our current state, we can't outrun him forever. And judging by the giant open grave we stumbled into, he's pretty familiar with this area. Right now, our number one priority is breaking line of sight. Fortunately, the dense vegetation makes this easier, but it also gives away our every step, which is almost certainly what he's using to stay on our trail. Although this works both ways. After we gain enough of a lead, we need to drop down into cover and stay quiet while looking for whatever we can to augment our striking power. Something with a little length, like a tree branch will be best, as it extends our reach, but given the situation, I'd say just about anything beats an empty hand. Once he gets in close, we'll have Davy take off running to draw his attention.
attention. As soon as it sounds like he's taking the bait, Woody will have to spring into action and lay a big hurt on Mackie before he can turn around. At which time, Davey will come back and join the party. If we're lucky, we can catch him off guard enough to put him on his back. And then, it's just a matter of wailing on his head until the candy comes out. Is this extremely dangerous and likely to fail? Absolutely. He's got a huge knife and probably a gun, and we're just a couple of dumb teenagers armed with a question mark. But it's pretty much the only shot both of us have at walking out of here. The only alternative is a sacrifice play, wherein one of us, namely Davey, because this whole mess is his vault anyway, volunteers his tribute to lead the psycho away, while Woody makes a run for civilization. This is ultimately what the boys end up doing, but they both make critical mistakes that cost them dearly in the end. First of all, Davey stops running right off the bat for, like, no reason, which defeats the purpose of the entire strategy. Either he's gonna catch you or you're gonna lose him and in both cases he'll just go after your friend of course it also doesn't help that woody chose to go back to the police cruiser but like why though did you think he left the keys in the ignition so you could make your escape besides it's the one place you know beyond a shadow of a doubt he will be returning to at some point or another i mean how else would he be planning to get out of here sadly their poor judgment cost them the game with davy taking a knife to the achilles tendon and woody well let's just say he had his first shave Poor guy. He was a true homie until the very end. Still, despite his injuries, there's a chance Davey might be able to limp his way to a- Ah, oh, god it, he went back to the cruiser. Well, you know what that means. Only this time, Mackie's got something to say. But you don't imagine what I am going to do when I come back for you. Do you have wondered every single day if that is the day that I'm gonna come for you? One day. Wow, that's, that's pretty brutal. Just letting him go living on, knowing it could end at any moment. Might have to steal that one someday. In the end, Davey made it out alive, albeit with some serious emotional and physical scars that will likely never fully heal. Furthermore, Officer Mackey is still out on the loose, and there's no telling when he might eventually return to make good on his promise. However, had Davey remained patient and only reported his findings upon capturing concrete evidence on film, Mackey likely would have never seen his arrest coming, nor would it have been known for sure where the accusations came from. For that reason, I think the summer of 84 was beat. Moral of the story, lock your goddamn doors.